Hey everybody, I'm Andy the Kenworth Guy. Thanks for coming by the channel today. So, you're probably wondering, or maybe you've heard, or maybe you've seen, what this is all about. Well, I'm gonna do a video in the future going into full detail about what happened. Uh, but yeah, I basically had an accident at the gym where I crushed the tip of my finger. And I don't know if you've heard of, uh, you know, like a bug splatting on your window. Well, that's basically what happened to my fingertip. Just like totally, totally splat, like crushed, mashed hamburger meat. It was really gross. Don't worry, I'll put a video out in the future. Uh, I'm trying to just get the footage from the from the gym where this all happened. So I'm trying to uh, progress through the pain, it hurts, but that's okay. So anyways, getting back to what you guys are all here for is truck videos, seeing what we have. Now, I don't know about you, but I sometimes have challenges with trying to build trucks for customers, getting them all the options that they want and keeping it in a light package. Now, the nice thing about a Kenworth truck, all aluminum cab, and that, that it lends to quite a bit lighter truck in the end. Now, this truck is pretty well fully loaded. We have disc brakes all around, air ride front axle, VIT interior, the fridge, the big bunk, the whole works. Like, it's, it's loaded right to the nines. And the weight of this truck is 16,658 pounds. Now, I'm not gonna tell you how we did it, but I'm sure you'll figure it out pretty darn soon into this tour. So, enough about this. Let's roll that intro, and I'll see you at the truck. All right, so here we are at the truck. This is a 2020 high bunk, 76 inch tall sleeper T680 Kenworth. It's fully loaded. Let's dive into the specs and I'll show you what it's all about. All right, so like I said, this is a 2020. It's one of my last 2020s uh, that are coming in here. The 2021s are starting to roll in here now. Uh, so this one here has uh, the high bunk, like I said, the 76 inch tall sleeper. Uh, we'll just kind of start at the front and go all the way to the back. Uh, we have the painted bumper with the built-in fog lights. So that's uh, a nice option there. Uh, this is a custom ordered truck that we built for an owner operator and uh, I built for an owner operator and uh, he picked and chose every option when we designed this truck. And sorry about the snow and it's a little bit dirty. I haven't cleaned it yet, but uh, there's a few other trucks I wanted to shoot for, for a video, but I wanted to get this one done here and uh, I might do another one once it's clean, just like a, a clean feature. So there's a few things that we have to finish up on it here yet, but uh, that's okay. We'll get back into the spec here. So uh, it's got the Bendix Wingman Fusion System. So that's what this plastic uh, guy right there is. That's a radar for uh, basically uh, detecting any vehicles or objects in front of you uh, to help uh, avoid any sort of collision. Uh, we have the aluminum metal mesh grill that's standard with the stainless shroud all the way around. And we did the heated, <coughs> pardon me. Uh, we did the, uh, the chrome mirrors up on the hood here. I believe we did the heated option. Uh, so that is an option. You can get them heated, uh, chrome or black, all black. So those are the three ways to configure them. Uh, this has got a three piece design hood. Uh, it is bonded. So you basically have this section here with a seam right up there and then a middle section. And then there's this side here. Now we have uh, Durabrite rims all the way around. Uh, Low Pro 22s up on the front here, 275 ADR 22 fives. Uh, this is a really neat feature here. Uh, down here is the, sorry, it's a little tough for me adjusting with my, uh, my finger here. I got my gloves on with a bandage on underneath, but anyhow, uh, sorry about the, the shaky camera. Uh, anyhow, right here is the 
adjustment here to, I'm not gonna open it, it's just a little bit challenging right now. I'll try. Hang on, try. There we go. So there's the batteries right there. Uh, so that's really nice having that access port so you can basically access those without having to uh, take the side fairings off. So you can see here, we have the engine heater, oil, that's the block, oil heater for the pan and then shore power. So this truck does have a factory installed inverter and the shore power basically gives you the ability to uh, run power on the truck, keep the fridge running uh, or whatever accessories you want, printers, TVs. So we got the partial chassis fairings, def tank is right behind there. Uh, right here is the fuel fill. So this is a neat option that you can do with the factory. Uh, we can notch out this area here so the fuel tanks are nice and tight up to the front, giving you more room to install toolboxes back here. So we have the door with the window up on this side here. I think we did it on the other side too. Uh, so we'll take a look at that side. Now what's kind of neat about this spec, uh, we did the dual exhaust back of cab. So this is the only way to get a dual exhaust uh, where they're both connected. So as you can see here, you got the Y pipe, your flex pipe, the Y pipe, and then they kind of both go up there. So uh, they're both connected in this case. Uh, up there is your antenna for the satellite radio. We have the, the uh, pedestal lights mounted up on the side here. And uh, there's your air lines, electric lines, all that right there. So this has the AG400L suspension. Uh, so it has this bracket up front, and then there's the access steps right there. Uh, now what's special about this truck is uh, it is super singles. So as you can see here, these are the big wide base tires, the 445 X1 Michelins. Uh, and what's really special about this truck is look at this diff. This is a dead axle. So basically the way that this truck is set up is one axle is powered. So we have drive shaft going to this diff here, which is a Dana Econotrack uh, S21. So that is uh, what we got here. And then there's no inner axle drive shaft. So as you can see, that back axle is, is uh, dead. It's not powered at all. I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, we have disc brakes on this truck all the way around. So you can see right there, disc brakes. And uh, we are gonna be changing these fenders again. Uh, these fenders were installed. These were designed for uh, reg regular tandems. Uh, we're gonna change them out. Uh, I wasn't happy with the layout, neither was the customer. So we're just gonna change that so it uh, has a little bit tighter profile and looks a lot better. So that's gonna get changed here. So hold your comments. Now you might be wondering, why is this dead axle not like a trailer axle where it's just a straight square tube across? Well, with this profile, with this design, uh, it, it helps with common parts at, at, the, at the factory level where basically instead of welding on a banjo housing, you're welding on just a flat plate. But the other thing is, is it helps with deflection. So as you're going down the road and the axles are bouncing, a straight bar has less give than this design here. So this here allows for a little bit of flex similar to that of a regular differential that's powered. So that's a little bit of info on that. So these are just really neat. Uh, it's kind of a neat setup. I don't think I've ever done a lift axle with this, uh, sorry, a, uh, a dead axle uh, configuration before. So we've sold them before. I've just, uh, this was my first. <laughs> so uh, here is the 24 inch slide air uh, fifth wheel. It's a Holland. We got a pile of room here. Uh, the customer's gonna be installing their own uh, generator on the truck. For, uh, for running heat, uh, if they would like to do that. And then, yeah, so we got the doors with windows in both sides. And then there is the side skirting. Here's the other radar for the, uh, the Bendix wingman system. And then uh, we didn't bother doing an access port on this side. You can if you want. It's where all your emissions is housed in there. It's all your DEF system, so uh, or DPFs. So let's open up the hood. And I'll show you what we have powering this truck. All right, really easy hood to open, 35 pounds of pressure, very simple. Uh, I had somebody comment to me, we were having a conversation actually the other day about uh, how these, how Kenworth doesn't have a lockable hood. And 
anyhow, I was talking with my customer and he said that a, uh, one of his uh, guy he knows, he was working on another brand of truck where you have to have a latch to unlock it. Uh, he was working underneath the hood and the hood closed on him. And he was working in the shop all by himself and the hood closed on him. Uh, and he was trapped underneath there. Now, fortunately, he was able to move around a little bit and find the cable and pull it and, and open it up. Now, with a Kenworth truck, you have this safety latch right here. So that safety latch prevents it from blowing back and, and, and trapping you underneath the hood. So just little differences in our, in our uh, culture, our, our design, how we want to do things. Now, what we did on the front here, uh, you see that little garden hose tap down there? So that is a uh, rad drain valve, 18 bucks from the factory to get that. If you want to drop all the coolant out of the, the system, out of the truck, you can do that right there. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, air ride front axle is what we put on this truck. Uh, we got disc brakes on the front here as well. Uh, this is the Packard engine, the 510 horsepower, uh, 1850 torque. Here's the HVAC system. I'm not gonna bother pulling the filter out. It's right in there. You don't, well, I'll try. Yeah, I got it. So it has the primary and the secondary filter, as you can see there. We pretty well picked every option on this truck. Uh, said, said yes to everything. A little bit more challenging doing this left-handed. There we go. Okay, well, uh, hit the safety latch here. Just take a quick look on the other side. So on this side here, this is where your fluid level checks are. We have your power steering, we have your washer fluid, your fuel water separator right there, your boost terminals for, uh, for truck access. This little thing is uh, air truck to, uh, to fill up the air in the truck. Uh, we have your engine oil fill. Oh, they changed it, it's purple. Um, Engine oil check, engine oil fill, and there's your fuel prime pump right there. And then your air filter up above. So that's a little bit about the outside of the truck. Let's take this to our inside. All right, so here we are inside the truck. We'll just kind of go all the way across uh, the dash here and kind of show you all the options and then into the bunk. Uh, so what this truck has, uh, we have power windows, door locks, and mirrors. The mirrors are heated, and that's all standard uh, equipment. Now down here, here's your ignition, of course. Uh, this is your di uh, brightness uh, dimmer for the, uh, for the dash. This is your interior cab lights with a floor light as well. Two posi a three position switch off. There's the floor lights and there's the cab lights. I'll leave them on for now. Uh, this is your exterior light test. Here's your pedestal lights on the side of the cab and then here's your flush lights on the back of the bunk. Now up here is your signal stat right there. This here is to get washer fluid onto the window. This is your marker light interrupter switch for the clearance lights up on the roof. And then obviously this is your signal. We did the leather wrap smart wheel. So we have the radio controls right here, your cruise control and high idle control right there. This is your uh, shifter for the Packard 12 speed transmission that this truck is equipped with. Uh, and then your Jake brake just by pulling that back. Now down here we have a spare switch, just marked spare. This is your trailer brake, or they used to call it the spike when it was up here. You can still call it your spike. Uh, this is to adjust your display up right in here when the truck is running. Your engine fan, air traction control. Uh, so that is basically to help uh, uh, adjust the power. Now with this system, what the truck has with a, with a dead axle, the the uh, air leveling valve is on the rear axle. And why that is, is when the front axle is in a spin, it works with the traction control system to pull air out of the back axle, out of the dead axle, so that it applies more traction to the forward axle. So just a little bit of information on that. Uh, here's your lane departure. So that works with the camera system, which is mounted right there in the dash. So that uh, disables it. So if you're going around a construction zone uh, where the lines on the road are all wacky and wonky, you can flick that on and it will disable the, the, uh, the lane departure detection for 15 minutes. So it'll get you through that construction zone and then it will re-enable. And that is shown up on the dash right here when the truck is running, of course. There's an auxiliary light switch. Uh, this is to disable the hill assist 
Uh, that holds your your uh, brakes when you go from your brakes to your throttle, so the truck doesn't roll back. Here's your regen switch uh, for the for the DPF, a spare switch, uh, auto suspension dump, your forward diff lock, your PTO switch, uh, your fifth wheel slide, uh, fifth wheel lock rather. So you can unlock the fifth wheel from inside of the cab here is what we chose when we spec the fifth wheel. And then this here is your fifth wheel slide. Now we did uh, six spare gauges with the Nav Plus screen. So it's got the Kenworth uh, navigation screen. I've done some videos on that before. If you want to check them out, you can uh, check out my other videos. I'll, if I remember, I'll put a link somewhere up here if I remember. So that's the Nav Plus screen. Uh, here is your uh, gauges, oil temperature, turbo boost, your front diff temperature, your suspension, your air filter, and an analog clock. Uh, then here is your your lights. So this is your hazards, uh, your this is your uh, clearance lights for the truck, headlights. This is your clearance lights up on the roof, and then uh, your fog light switch, and then the bunk lights. So I'll turn that on for the back tour. Now with these seats, we did the GT703 seats. They come with a little storage pocket right here. So you got a storage pocket on that side. Um, hang on, I'm just gonna take my glove off. Now down here is the auto suspension dump. So that drops all the air out of the system. And this here raises it back up. This here is to adjust the shock. This is the height adjustment and the lumbar supports. Now with the 703 seats, you get the love handle huggers right here. So you get the added lumbar supports on the side. Uh, we did order it with the swivel seat option. I'll show you that function here in a moment. Now you see all these little perforations. This truck has heated and air conditioned or cooled seats. So that is uh, what these trucks what this truck is set up with. So, and as you can see, it's the tan interior with the diamond stitching. So you get the diamond stitch doors, the wood grain here, wood grain on the dash, really nice accents. Now let's uh, take a look in the back here. I'm leaving my shoes on, the plastic is still on. I haven't brought this truck to Rob yet to detail and clean. So all that plastic is gonna get removed. Uh, now, here is the, oh, my, doesn't like, Okay, it's beeping at me here. Low voltage disconnect because I have the cab lights on. Here, I'll just start it. So what that does is uh, when the cab lights are on, low voltage disconnect is going to basically cut the power to the truck so that you have uh, enough power to restart the truck is what that is. So down here is your storage. Uh, you got these drawers down below rotating table so this flips out like so really nice and easy operation you can even do it with uh, a part of a missing finger uh, here is uh, your uh, TV mount now we ordered it with an inverter so you get the plugs right here uh, you got a 12 volt outlet there you got a little strap here to hold a laptop printer whatever your choice is this is a spot for the microwave you also get this with the inverter and then another 12 volt outlet up there and then up above is additional storage. Now, with the diamond interior, you get the stitching down here, the diamond stitching up top, with the diamond stitching on the upper bunk here, like so. Uh, and then on this side, we did the cabinets. So it's got the full cabinets with the shelf. This shelf is removable. And then you get the storage pockets in the door of the cabinet with a mirror and a little hook to hang a hat or a toque or whatever you want. You got more storage up above. And then on the back here, we ordered it with a factory installed S-Bar heater. So that will run the heater for the truck when the, uh, when the truck is shut off. Uh, here is your fridge to turn it on. You have a power outlet here to charge your cell phone. This is the adjustment for the fan in the back of the bunk. You have the lights for the back of the bunk. This is the little night light under the cab. Uh, this is the, to lock the doors, and then you have a clock right there. <clears throat> Down below is the fridge. Ouch, that hurt. Uh, I just bumped the tip of my finger, so anytime I do that, it kind of kind of hurts. Uh, anyhow, this is uh, a drawer-style fridge, so it all comes out to you, 
and then a nice drop down. And this here slides out if you wanna have more room and have a taller fridge. And then finally down below is the bottom shelf here. Now I'll open up the, uh, the, the bottom bed here. So down below is a little latch. You lift that up and then you can see everything. So there's the inverter, here's a subwoofer, here's the factory S-bar heater, and then here is the HVAC system for the truck. When the truck is running, this is what's on. And you can hear that right now. So that's a little bit about uh, the back bunk area. Oh yeah, there's uh, these lights that uh, flick on when this opens up or when the doors are open. So that's kind of nice so you can uh, have uh, visibility in there, no problem. And a couple other little things here I'll show you. I'll just put this down. So this guy here with these windows, we have this long plastic piece that runs right here and this metal bar. So you can just slide this underneath there and it just kind of holds it in there nice and tight. So uh, nice way to do things. And then if you want to roll it up, you just basically pull it off like so. You roll it up and then you have these little things to click in up here if you wanna do that. So we'll just leave that there for now. I'll show you how this uh, swivel seat works here. It's pretty simple. Now there is a sweet spot to this here. So you wanna make sure that your seat cushion is kind of tucked in tight. Slide this here pretty far forward, but not all the way. And then you flip this guy here down on the floor and then you can flip it around like so. So there we have it. So that is a quick tour on this truck here. I appreciate you sticking around to watch this video. Uh, I just wanna say thank you again to everybody who has uh, sent comments uh, for your prayers and all of your, uh, your support. I definitely feel the love from everybody uh, with regards to my finger. Uh, it's a little bit shorter. Lost about that much of it here. So that's okay, life, life carries on. But uh, thanks again for coming by the channel. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, uh, just click the link down in the bottom corner here and uh, you can subscribe. If you wanna check out what we have in stock, you can click up here. If you wanna sit down and spec a truck with me, uh, I, I'd be happy to do that with you. You can give me a call, send me an email. My contact information is below of this video in the description. Uh, so again, thanks for coming by and as always, have the world's best day. Without further ado, I hate that line. Where, <coughs> oh, pardon me. <laughs>